Now, uh, yeah, I don't know if you think anything of this whole zookeeper and cat is just poking stuff with sticks, is it? Pretty well. Now, all right. Now, don't try and do this at home, all right? Or at work, or at your backpackers' hostel. Now, uh -huh. is that your camper van in my car park, is it? No. Yeah. We're not camping, we're just staying the night. Yeah, we're not eating, it's just two minute noodles. <laughs> yeah, alright. Now, I'm going to try and annoy this one a little bit, and if we're lucky, she'll rear up the strike, and in fact she is. Alright, now, this is the classic strike up, sweetheart. Up, strike position for the funnel web. Anytime you see a picture or a postcard on the funnel web, oh, it's always doing that. Now, I know right here, ready to kill, uh, oddly enough, less dangerous than it was, it was walking along. No, you don't believe me, do you? I'll show you. Ah! 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 <laughs> you ever do it without making that noise? <laughs> Not half as good, is it? Ah! Ah! Now, I can do that for two reasons. Number one, I'm better than you. And number two, uh, in this position, she's got three quite distinct physical disadvantages in relation to attacking a human. They are, number one, the location of her eyes. The eyes are on the carapace, shiny bit if you like, and they are fixed in their gaze and focal point, so she can't roll her eyes, she can't look sideways. When she lies flat on the ground, the eyes look straight up, oh, bird's about to kill you. However, when she's in a strike position, uh, up soon, huh? uh, she can't see forward. She can't see her own fangs, she can't see the animal she's about to bite. Her next disadvantage, the fangs themselves, very, very long, very sharp. In fact, they're so long, they were straight, they drag on the ground and the spider walks and they're ruined very quickly. The fangs are recurved. They tuck underneath her body, but they're not articulated. She can't do that. They tuck under all the time so that when she walks, they don't touch the ground. But when it comes to striking, she needs to rear onto her hind legs and drive the fangs forwards and down. Now that leads us to her last disadvantage. And that is, uh, oddly enough, she's striking there, uh, the number of legs. She's got eight. She needs at least six of her eight very firmly on the ground to walk and in the strike position, insufficient legs. Now currently she's got one, two in the air, um, this one not supporting any weight. Uh, she's got most of her weight on four out of five, uh, but she can't walk. She needs to decide, stand here or run away. Now, you shouldn't really have to more fighting about all sorts of emotions and feelings that actually don't have. However, she can determine the difference between standing and running. Now, to get her into the jar, uh, all you're going to do is just pop the jar carefully down over the top of the spider. Now, at this point, it's very tempting to ring up your friends and boast about your prowess at catching funnel webs. But the reality is, you haven't really caught one at all. All you've really done is trapped one under the jar. Now, what you've got to do next is transfer the spider from the laundry floor into the jar. Now, if your house is as crummy as mine, just lift up the tiles on your laundry floor. <laughs> now, uh, if you're a decent joint, stiff paper, plastic cardboard, stiff laminated paper, half the jar, half a millimetre, very carefully encourage the funnel web onto that card. Now, do this really carefully uh, for two reasons. I don't want you to get bitten, I don't want you to injure the spider. This is a very valuable animal for us here at the park. Now, when it comes to pick the whole arrow up, mum, don't put your hand under the card, all right? Put your finger up the top. And carefully avert the jar, there's your funnel web safe and sound. You pop the lid on, there'll be a dead funnel web in there in about half an hour. Even less than a warm each day. What we need you to do is irrigate the spider. Now we want you to catch the spider for us because we want to produce the antivenom product. But the spider needs to be alive. And the way you irrigate the spider isn't by putting water in the jar. Instead what we do is to put a little bit of damp soil in the jar. And we want a smallish handful carefully down the side of the jar, pop the lid on, put a couple of air holes in it, keep it in the shade until you're passing your nearest public hospital. They will take the spider and deliver it to me up here at the Reptile Park. Now if you live on the Central Coast, uh, you might want to deliver the spider to us yourself. Uh, and we love it when you do that, because we like to have a good laugh. Yes. You bring us fun, it's pretty funny. <laughs> you all walk the same way. Sounds some car park, we get on the radio and go, check this out, funnel web coming. You'll run to the floor and this is what you see. <laughs> now, I can actually look through the jar and tell whether it's a funnel web, but we never ever do. Instead, you look a little bit vague. You go, right, we brought a, um, oh, 
Um, spider. I'll have a look for you. We take the lid off the jar and everybody starts to get a little bit nervous. We say, Jess, one has been hard to see, isn't it? I think I need to have a very close look for you. Oh, look at that. It's the world's deadliest spider. <laughs> you understand that funnel webs don't jump. Our family goes, yep, we knew that. Then on the way out, you hear Dad saying, that's not true. Funnel webs jump six feet. I've seen them. Well, sorry, Dad. Funnel webs are my gallimores. They're ground burrowing spiders. They dig holes in concrete hard ground. They just don't jump. I'm so convinced that they don't jump that I could take that hand and an attractive yet naive international tourist. I could take her hand, I could place her hand on top of the jar. There's no danger of the funnel web jumping. It's my epilepsy, it's a real issue here. Now, the funnel webs don't jump, they just don't jump. Now, uh, the stories behind jumping funnel webs uh, and you know, biting through steel cap boots, hunting toddlers in their beds at night, these stories came from the era prior to an anti-venom being available, that was 1980. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up on Sydney's North Shore in the 1960s. Yes, I know, you're thinking he means the 70s. Uh, no, 60s. Uh, back then, no anti-venom. If, uh, if you were nailed by a funnel web, you would lie in the front lawn until somebody managed to clutch start the Holden Sandman panel there. And they would load you into the back, drag you to hospital. When you arrived, the treatment was three grains of morphine just to keep you quiet and comfortable. And of course, they would cross your fingers. Yes, that was the method of treatment. Pain relief, and you never know, you might pull through. And very sadly, about 13 people didn't pull through. And that all changed in 1980 with the uh, release of the very first ampule of funnel with antibiotic. It works remarkably well. We haven't had a death ever since. But each year, we get about 300 envenomations on the East Coast. Uh, of those, about 60 are bites by males, and of those 60, about 6 to 10 are life and death situations each year. So far, we've been very lucky. Now, you might have heard me, you've, uh, you've, you've seen me and heard me on the radio, just about every radio station, uh, from Triple J, pop, those final words are so wacky, uh, right through to uh, uh, Ray Hadley, where we talk about the terrible price of artificial hits. Uh, but um, the message has been the same all the way through. Uh, we need your final words. Uh, we have a, a desperate shortage of funnel webs here at the park. Uh, we've had a long period of hot, dry weather, which means they're not terribly active. But we're just about to enter funnel web bite season, and uh, we desperately need funnel webs. So if you've got them at your house, um, let's be clear, I am not coming out to your house to catch them, OK? Uh, but uh, I know you've seen it on Bondi there, but look, it's fake, all right? Okay, the house is fake, the spider's fake, the woman's fake. We are not driving to Wollongong to say to you, no, it's a daddy long legs. All right, now, they are simple spiders to trap. Now, uh, the reason we need them is that uh, we only look the males. The males only have a four-year lifespan. Uh, and every week we lose males out of the program just through old age. Every week we need to recruit more into that program. Now, uh, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, why would I catch a funnel web? Well, we want you to see it as an investment in your future. If you wake up in the ICU recovering from funnel web bite, that will be as a result of the antivenom from the reptile park, and that will be as a result of a funnel web uh, donated 12 months earlier. So perhaps see them not so much as killers, but as potential life savers. Now, earlier today, young Kyle would have showed you how to apply a bandage for a snake bite. We use the same technique for funnel web. Uh, remove jewellery because you swell up. The last thing you want is to lift an amputated finger in hospital. So, jewellery off. Produce or make a bandage if you need to. Wrap that bandage around the bite site several times. Uh, extend it down to the end of the limb and then all the way back up to the shoulder, into the ambulance and directly to the hospital. Now, uh, I've made it sound uh, light hard, almost like picnic today. It's really not. It's one of the most horrific experiences that you could ever imagine. If you were bitten by a taipan from North Queensland, if you were uh, untreated, you would succumb between about 12 and 18 hours after the bite. If it was a cobra from Southeast Asia or the Indian subcontinent, you'd be looking at about 24 to 30 hours before you died. The record for a male funnel of envenomation is 76 minutes between being bitten and being dead. The infant record for kids two years or less, sorry my new friend up there, it's your first day out, uh, 13 minutes is the record for you. Don't muck around. If you suspect a funnel web bite, you phone to blow immediately and get that bandage on. Now this is the last formal talk we have for you today. I know some of you are thinking, oh, what are we going to do now? Well, it's actually very